If God is a good God, if God is loving, then why would he allow suffering? Then why would he let someone who didn't do anything wrong go through what they're going through? Why would God allow this to happen? The answer is, if love is a choice, suffering is a possibility. When we have suffering and pain, one of the reasons that God has allowed that is to reveal to us the consequences of sin. If you and I could sin against God, disobey Him, and there's no pain, no suffering, because of our fallen nature, we would just keep on doing the same thing. So we have choices, we have freedom to choose, but when we choose those things that are disobedient to God, we're going to suffer the consequences. Jesus said, you're gonna have suffering. Jesus said this in John 16, 33. He said, you will have suffering in this world. So all pain and all suffering is not bad. Pain and suffering are here for a reason. And one of those reasons is to alert us to danger. If it's possible to love, it's also possible to hurt. But the only way that love is possible is to have a choice to choose love. What does free will mean? Free will is simply the ability to choose. In other words, if you have the ability to choose love, you also have the ability to choose hate. If you have the ability to choose what's right, you also have the ability to choose what's wrong. And that's what makes evil and suffering possible. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 says, Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. God is love. He wants us to receive his love, and he wants us to choose to love him back for who he is. And when we choose evil, we choose what the Bible calls sin. Sin leads to pain and suffering. The presence of pain isn't a lack of love. In fact, oftentimes the presence of real pain is the evidence of real love. Why do individual events of pain and suffering happen? Friends, honestly, in this world, you may not get a full answer because no amount of words are gonna be sufficient for you. It's always gonna sound trite when you're in the middle of suffering. What you need is the very real presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Why do bad things happen to good people? Have you ever wondered that? Why does someone who didn't do anything wrong have something so bad and so tragic happen in their life? Truthfully, something bad only happened to someone good one time, and Jesus volunteered for it. The innocent one who never did anything wrong took on the punishment for our sin. He is the only one who is good. There are a myriad number of ways that God can and he will cause good to emerge from your suffering if you are committed to following him. God suffered for us. He suffered for you. He surrendered the glory of heaven and was born into poverty into Jesus Christ. He was mocked as a bastard child born to an unwed mom. Jesus was rejected by those closest to him, his family and abandoned by his friends. He was falsely accused when he did nothing wrong. He was wrongly imprisoned. Jesus, the only one who was good, was beaten, tortured, stripped naked, hung shamefully on a cross. And the worst of all is that the one who was good, 
the Lamb of God became sin for us. The innocent one took the sins of the world to die on it so that we could be forgiven. We decide, we decide whether we're gonna turn bitter or turn to God for peace and courage. We make that decision. When tough times come, we gonna turn bitter or we gonna turn to God and receive peace and courage? And then he cried out the same question you might have cried out before. And he said, Matthew 27, 46, my God, my God, why? Where'd you go? Why does it feel like you've left me? God, why have you forsaken me? I didn't do anything wrong, God. I served you faithfully. I've been obedient in every single way. I've loved you and lived for you. My God, my God, why? And Jesus did that for us. He did that for you. He did that for me. And he felt more pain than we'll ever feel. And God, the Father, watched his innocent son suffer. Some people became, become angry and bitter and, and turn inward because of the suffering they've gone through. And yet somebody else can go through the same kind of suffering and they come closer to God and closer to people and more loving and more tender. John 3.16 says this, for God so loved the world. For God so loved. Love is not just something that he does, it's who he is. For God so loved the world that what did he do? He gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world, but be courageous. I have conquered the world. God loves us so much. God loves you so much that he took your misery, he took your suffering so seriously that he was willing to let his son take it. Why? Because God knew Something better was coming. God's ultimate answer to suffering is not just an explanation, it is the incarnation. Suffering is a personal problem. Therefore, God sent a personal solution in Jesus Christ. He knew that it takes a death to have a resurrection. He knew that sometimes it takes a hurt to have a healing. Sometimes it takes a loss to overcome the loss and find victory. Sometimes it's out of bondage that you step in and find freedom. He knew that even out of the darkness, he is so good and so powerful and so present that he can bring good even out of the bad. And Psalm 34 verse 18 says this, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. He knows in your life something better is coming. And the Bible says one day we'll die. And the Bible says one day we'll rise. And those who use our free will, our choice to follow Jesus, to know Jesus, to serve Jesus, to love Jesus, they will meet him in eternal glory. And one day you will suffer no more. Revelation 21 verse four tells us that one day after this earth is gone, there's a new heaven and a new earth and Jesus reigns in every form and fashion from the throne that God will wipe every tear from their eyes and there'll be no more death and no more sorrow and no more crying and no more pain.
all these things are gone forever because something better is coming.